What is going on, guys? I'm back with another episode of a TV movie podcast. And today I have for you a live feed, Big Brother 25 update. It's going to be a quick one. I just got done watching some live feeds. So let's just get into it. We saw Riley, Matt, and Corey outside. They were talking about how they don't trust Izzy. Basically, Izzy is just, you know, a really crazy, not crazy, that's not really what I, the term I want to use for her, but she's really, you know, she they don't trust her, right? They're not even in their, they don't really talk game much, you know what I'm saying? So Izzy's not even really, you know, in their alliance, so that's pretty much why they don't really trust her, right? And But she is close with Sari and, and Jared, who is in their alliance, so they're just trying to make sure that you know, they're not giving Izzy too much information because Izzy likes to run her mouth a lot. But, you know, Hassan is the real person that they're really worried about because Hassan is somebody that's really just, you know, in your face. Like, he'll really go up to you and be like, yo, who are you working with? What are you doing? Like, for instance, with Corey, like Corey's the, the number one person he likes to heckle. And, you know, they're basically just talking about how, you know, how Hassan is just just grilling Corey, like for instance, they, they say Corey's not really good at um, playing cool. Like I think uh, Riley was saying how uh, they were in the HOH room and they were just trying to play cool when Hassan was walking in. And then, you know, this is what Corey basically did. He was like, oh, I gotta go do laundry. You know, <laughs> like, like, they, they, like man, my boy Corey needs to like learn how to relax. But uh, yeah, it looks like Izzy and Assam are like two of the main people that the big alliance is worried about, right? And speaking of a big alliance, let's talk about how Red manages to tell Riley about the eight person alliance. And he, he does it in a way where it's like, yo, I want to work with you guys. You know, I, I see you guys. I'm very observant. I want to work with you guys. And he literally lists every single person in that alliance. And Riley's kind of like, looking at him like oh yeah they're 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 just cool with me you know i'm cool with them too but we're not really working together but we're looking out with for each other you know and then after that riley goes and talks to her alliance members and basically tells them that yo red red knows we're working together he wants to work with us but he knows we're working together and they kind of just sit there and think hmm should we let red in and they're, they're leaning towards like bringing Red in the alliance and making it a nine person alliance, which I don't know if it's that good of an idea because you don't know if you can trust Red. And an, an alliance that big is, is sure not to make it. Like we, it's very rare for a big alliance like that to make it all the way to the end. So the thing is with Red though, is that Riley does trust Red. And Red does seem like a trustworthy person. So what I would suggest for them isn't to quickly bring him in, but, you know, give him bits of pieces of information and see what he does with it. See if he goes and spills it, you know, it, information that might not even be true. You know, make make Red be a target if he wants to go and spill that information to other people. You know what I'm saying? But if he, he keeps that information, he's loyal, then you you slowly bring him into the alliance and start talking to him maybe do some one-on-ones and then you bring in in for a big um, meeting with the alliance and that's how you should do it but if they're gonna do it in a way where like you're just gonna you know totally trust him right away and then have that meeting right away and he knows for sure that y'all are working together he could just be like all right bet if he wins hoh next week he could be like screw that alliance I, i'm gonna go here and they put like you know what i'm saying you don't know you don't know yet until you know you got to test him first and yeah so you got to watch out and i'm thinking that the person that is in the best position right now is probably cam bro you know serial killer cam night one everybody was thinking that he was ted bundy but now he's not no ted bundy anymore he's more of a a good guy i don't know of the rock <laughs> that was a bad comparison uh i don't know i don't know any good guys uh, i'm a good guy all right i'm gonna shut up but uh yeah but the reason why i think cam is in a good spot is because he's not ruffling any 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 feathers right he's in some alliances but he's not in the actually he is in the main alliance but he's not but they think it's it's blue 
Blue is in the main alliance, right? Cam isn't necessarily in that alliance, but he's working with people in that alliance. So that's why he's in a great spot because he's not necessarily associated with them directly, but indirectly he's with everybody. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I think Cam is in a great position. I think Blue is also in a great position. Like people in the main alliance that aren't being talked about, like Blue, like Cam, like no, not Corey. <laughs> but people like that, you know what I'm saying, are in a great spot. Even Jerry is in a good spot now. He was playing a little bit messy, but I think he's in a good spot now. Like, I think the people in, in a bad spot are obviously people that aren't in power. Like Christine, Izzy, you know, people that are going to be targeted by the big alliance, right? But I also think, you know, people in the big alliance aren't, in the best spot per se like they're in a good spot now but in the future like let's say if Nicole wins HOH like R Riley could be worried you know like people like that you know like like let's say like you Riley left um Kristen and who else was on the block uh someone else ah, I forgot damn uh she took off Corey and Ah, someone else, but like, let's say if Kristen somehow stays, like Riley's in trouble just like that. Jag is in trouble just like that because they're very tight. And Matt too, you know what I'm saying? So they're in a great spot now, but they have to worry about next week. You know what I'm saying? I think the people that don't have to worry about next week are niggas like Cam, niggas like um, Bowie. Like nobody's even mentioned her name. You know what I'm saying? But Hassan is in a terrible spot. Corey's in a, in a good spot, but his name is being mentioned too much by the other side of the house. So, you know, he needs to worry next week as well, even though he's in a good spot now. Anyway, guys, it's been a TV and movie podcast. Thank you for listening. This will be a quick update. See you guys in the next episode. Peace.